Hi everybody, Jennifer Blevins-Smith here with Integral Clinic Solutions, and you're watching my YouTube channel, Navigating the Business of Medicine. Today we're going to do a quick review of how to read insurance cards and this is very important for your front office staff and also for your billing staff to be able to look at a insurance card from a payer and retrieve all the information they need and understand what they're seeing and being able to enter the information in the correct spaces in the EHR based off what they're getting from the insurance card. So we're gonna go ahead and jump right in. I have chosen a few examples of insurance cards. These are demo insurance cards only. I Googled to find them. I will put the links of where I found them in the description in the video, but they are not real patients. There's no PHI here. They're just used for demonstration. And I chose payers who are national payers, so hopefully these will be similar to some of the payers that your staff will be seeing coming into the office with patients uh, with their medical insurance cards. So the first thing in the top left hand corner is where you're going to see the name of the insurance company. And here you can see I chose an Anthem plan and then I also have a Blue Cross Blue Shield because they are a national payer and everyone will see an Anthem card and Blue Cross Blue Shield cards probably more often than not. So we're going to start with this. So we have the name of the payer, the type of insurance that the patient would have, which it's a HMO, PPO, EPO, POS, whatever plan it is, is going to most likely say in this upper right hand corner or it would say down below like on here. You can see it says PPO plan here and here, but it usually indicates somewhere on the card what kind of plan it is. And then sometimes it will also have the name of the plan. So as you can see on this one, the name of this plan is the Medi-Cali program. The Medi-Cal program is in California, of course, um, but they will have different names of plans somewhere on the card. Now here you can see the patient's name. This is the patient's full name as it is at the insurance company. So you wanna make sure your staff understands that any way that their name is entered on this card it needs to be exactly identically entered into your EHR system because that's how they're going to connect and recognize one another when claims are sent over. So if Jonathan is his legal name on his uh, photo ID or driver's license, but it's John at the insurance company, then it needs to be John in your EHR system. System. And if they have a middle initial used on their insurance card, then we need to enter their middle initial because like I said, it needs to be able to match identically in order for them to be able to pay and process that claim. The next thing is the member ID. Now this also could be called a subscriber ID, an identification number, and it is a little deceiving because although it says number in it, what's your member ID number, what's your ID number, your subscriber ID number, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily going to be always all numbers. So as you can see, Anthem, Blue Cross, Blue Shield are notorious for having a three digit alpha prefix before the numbers. So if your staff is not aware that Blue Cross Blue Shield plans always have a three letter alpha prefix, they need to be made aware because they need to make sure they're capturing that information or they will not be found, the patients will not be found in the payer system and it will delay processing claims and delay payment and it just kind of snowballs. So definitely want to make sure that you're educating your staff if you know that the payers in your area have little nuances or cadences in their ID numbers that you are educating them, letting them know. I used to give examples like this exactly um, as a resource to my front office and billing staff so uh, of our most common payers so that they could get familiar with this and know where to look and I just had it on a OneDrive for them to access and I would add to it if we saw a new payer and so I would try to do that for them so that's never a bad idea. The group number, not all payers have a group number, like Medicare does not have a group number, um, but there are other plans out there that do not have group numbers, but a lot of them do. So that's another thing that you're going to need to educate your staff on which 
payers do have group numbers and which ones don't. So you need to collect that information if it is on there. So here's the group number on here, here's the group number on here, and those are very important that you make sure the staff understands that a member ID, subscriber ID goes in however it's labeled in the EHR system and the group number goes where the group number is labeled in the EHR system. Sometimes they'll have a member effective date, not always. If you have the information, I encourage you to enter it into the information in the patient's chart, but if you don't have it, it's not that big of a deal. It's just helpful if you do. These, the bin number PCN RX group, that's for the pharmacy. This is all stuff that the pharmacy uses to process payment and coverage for prescriptions. So that's why patients do need to have that on them. Just like right here, you'll always see a little part. And then sometimes it will have the copay for the prescriptions on there for patients too, not all the time. The thing I like to give warning about is if an insurance card has a copay on it, like this office visit copay, is still check your eligibility and benefits for the patient because that's going to be the most updated information with the interface that you have or the portal that you have access to and that is going to give you the most current copay amount because maybe this is an old card and they went up five dollars this year per copay so it's twenty five dollars hundred and five dollars who knows but the member ID number and the group number didn't change, so they didn't issue new cards if people stayed on their plan year to year. And they're not going to send new cards necessarily just for increasing the copay because they assume that uh, providers and clinics are checking that on their own anyway. So definitely make sure that although that's a good guide if you have no other resource to at least collect something, it's definitely better to look in the portal or dirt through your EHR interface with the clearinghouse to find out what their current copay amount is. And when I talk about the PPO, HMO, it's the information will be on here somewhere, but it will also be in your benefits check that if you're looking for it in the right place, which is something they should be looking for when they're registering patients. And if a patient needs a referral or they need a prior authorization, a lot of times that will be notated on the card as well. These don't, so they're not on here. But the insurance card can give you a lot of information, and I don't think staff realize how valuable the information is. So if they collect information over the phone when they're registering the patient and then they check in, they're not necessarily looking at the insurance card. They're just scanning it into the system, which is good, but they're not looking and checking and making sure that the data that was entered over the phone was accurate. They're not making sure they're capturing all the records Right information or learning more from about the patient's plan from reading it. So it's really important you stress to your staff that they need to be looking at these insurance cards when they're handed to them and checking them over for the things that I'm pointing out today. And if you need your staff to know the difference between an HMO and a PPO plan, I did do a video on that recently, so check that out and let them watch that. The back of the card right here is super important. A lot of people are really bad at remembering to flip cards over, but it also has valuable information, not just the front. So the things that are important to know on the back of the card are where the claims are gonna go. And it used to be back in the day, we'd base our choice of which insurance in the system because your EHR system most likely is going to have many choices for many of the same insurance sounding plans. So like Blue Cross Blue Shield, Anthem, you know, they're gonna be multiple options and they're gonna be like, I don't know which one to choose. And if there isn't one in your system and you need to add it into the system, there's certain information that you're gonna to need to provide to your billing company, your billers, or whomever is going to be adding that payer into your system to make sure that it gets mapped correctly and that claims go where they need to go for patients in order for you to get paid. The address used to be important because they used to send all claims through the mail, but then with the electronic world coming into play, there's a thing called a payer ID number. And the payer ID number is four or five or six digits long and that is what you would put into your billing system that will communicate with the clearinghouse which communicates with the payer so that the electronic claim goes seamlessly through the process electronically with that payer ID being mapped to the appropriate place. So it's kind of like the post office box number for electronic claims. And so having the payer ID number is super important and having your staff 
compare that payer ID to whatever they're choosing in the system's payer ID and making sure they match is really important as well. That's one of the biggest reasons why insurance claims will get denied or get rejected at the clearinghouse is because they chose the wrong payer so they're like not found in the system or they're not effective and you're like, wait, we know they are and it's because it was sent to the wrong payer so of course they can't be found at the wrong payer's place. So that's really important. Um, our next example will have a payer ID number, but this also, this is a thing for Blue Cross Blue Shield in general. So if you saw a patient with Blue Cross Blue Shield of California, if you're participating with your local Blue Cross Blue Shield, which most people do because it's a major national payer, then you would send it to your local Blue Cross Blue Shield, like you would send your local Blue Cross Blue Shield patients that are insured, and they would forward it to the California branch. So right here, it will say submit claims to local Blue Cross and or Blue Shield plan. Please include the three digit alpha prefix that precedes the ID card number. So that's why the alpha prefix is so important and it's really important if you're seeing somebody who is out of their coverage area or their plan area to find out how to submit claims or where to submit claims, you're gonna find that information most likely on the back of the card. And they might be waiting to try to ask the office manager or you or billing, like, how do I enter this? Where this, should this go? What should I choose? And a lot of times the answer is in their hands or has been scanned in because it says on the back of the card exactly what to do. Our next example, ooh, sorry about that. Um, the next example is United Healthcare, another national payer. If it was an AARP plan, which is the Medicare Med Advantage plan under United Healthcare, it would say that up here. The health plan number, we don't really do anything about, but as you can see, here's the member ID number, here's the group number, and down here it tells you the plan name, so it's the UHC Choice Plus plan, and you'll get to know these different plan names in your area, and you'll get to know which ones are going to require a referral on file to be seen, which ones are going to require a prior auth, which ones are an HMO that you have to make sure you're participating in the HMO network. Um, even if it doesn't say HMO on it somewhere, which usually it does, then you would might be able to tell, or if it's a, a care home plan or something, you'd be able to know by the name of the plan. So it's very important that your staff are looking at that as well, depending on the payer and if they have names of plans like Aetna does, Cigna does, um, United Healthcare does, and a lot of them do. So you wanna make sure that they're also looking for the name of the plan. Here you can see the subscriber, the member number, um, this insurance card happens to actually list everyone that's insured by this plan. Not all payers do that, but this one does, so they can use this card for anybody who's covered under this plan and listed. Here are the copays again, that we talked about. And I know I said to look on the back of the card for information and the payer ID, but look at this. The payer ID number is on the front of this card. So it's really important that your staff is looking. First, I would look on the back because majority of them are listed by the claims address. But if they're not there, it's got to be on the front. If for some reason you find a payer that does not put their payer ID on the insurance card, which would probably be a small plan in your area and not a national payer. You would need to call the provider phone number on the back of the card, which they always have a contact number. Sometimes the number's the same for members and providers, and then when you call, there's an option, choose one for a member, two for provider. But you call and just say that you're a doctor's office, you wanna submit electronic claims, and what's the payer ID? And they'll ask you some questions, like where you're located, if you're participating, that kind of stuff, and they'll provide you with that payer ID number. But don't assume anything if you can't find it you need to get it because a lot of insurances now only accept electronic claims Medicare will only accept electronic claims they will not accept paper claims other ones might but it will go faster if you send them electronically as well and so the back of the card here even though it doesn't have the payer ID it still has contact information that's helpful. And then it has a number for the patient to call and then pharmacy. And this has the pharmacy information right here. So, you know, and then it says when it was printed, sometimes they do that, sometimes they don't. See, this doesn't have the effective date on it. So, you know, just there's no standard template that payers follow, unfortunately. So it's just training your staff on which payers 
you need to look for things in which places and what kind of nuances or cadences they might have. My last example is Medicare. Everybody's going to have Medicare. Things to note about Medicare is that this number, the Medicare number, is the member number or the subscriber ID number. They're all used interchangeably. And they no longer accept social security numbers as the number. So if a patient comes in and your staff is scanning in the card and they notice that it has a, it, it's not this kind of format, that it's all numbers and it looks like a social security number and there's no letters in it, then it's most likely a social security number and they can't accept that. They will no longer accept social security numbers. All beneficiaries have been swapped out and sent their new cards. So if you know, that's the case. You can't bill it with their social security number. They're going to have to get you their Medicare member number that's in this format. There are some resources on cms.gov where they can call and request their new card to be sent to them. They ha can get online through the web if they're technically savvy and they can get it that way. They could get a digital copy that way, but just note that you can't bill unless you have this formatted number. And then down here it says when their Part A coverage started, their Part B, which is their medical, started, and then how their name is in the Medicare system, which is very important to match as well, just like the commercial payers. So that's the thing to note about Medicare. And if you have a patient who has a United Healthcare AARP Advantage plan, and that's who you bill, and you don't need their Medicare information to bill, I would still encourage your staff to collect that card and scan it in if they have it on them because you never know when this number might come in handy in the future for certain things and it's always good just to have as a reference even if you're not entering it into your billing system at least having it in the documents to reference so if you have any questions or comments please leave that in the comment section below i hope this helps i hope you can show this to your staff or whoever you think would be helpful, but it's definitely something that they're going to need to get used to seeing all the different insurance payers, um, insurance cards in the area and knowing what they're looking for and making sure that they're comparing what was entered into the system matches exactly what's on the card so that you don't have any discrepancies because let's be honest, the RCM, the whole revenue cycle starts at the front desk with registering patients and entering their insurance information. So if that's not good, then you're going to have issues moving forward. So this is very, very important to be educating everybody about. Thank you so much. Smash the thumbs up if today's video was helpful. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and take care of yourself. I hope you guys are all doing well. Bye-bye.